The FIC says in the process of raising, dispersing and cross-border movement of money, the NPOs are at risk of being used to advance terrorism, financing, tax evasion and money laundering. The director of the Institute of Public Policy Research, Graham Hopwood, welcomed the move, saying it is part of the transparent governance the IPPR is advocating. Tony Hancocks, the director of the Legal Assistance Center, also said her organization is ready to comply with the requirement if it falls under the relevant organizations required to register. But Dr. Andre September, a member of the Council of Churches Leaders' Council and a minister of the Vintage United Congregation Church, is suspicious of the sudden requirement for churches to register with FIC. He said the government should instead develop good governance practices, such as ensuring that NPOs keep financial records and submit audited reports. Dr. September is also of the view that it is wrong to conclude that NPOs are at risk of being used by terrorist organizations without providing evidence for such. That is totally unacceptable, as if churches and organizations that work for the upliftment of the people, validating their basic humanity and advancing their dignity, are sitting ducks for terrorism. I dare anyone to come and make that case to the church in Namibia with conviction. He also questioned what terrorism threat Namibia is facing, adding that the new requirement may be abused to place unjustifiable shackles on NPOs. It creates a genuine apprehension that the potential exists that this law will be abused by intelligence to conduct undesirable surveillance and other activities on NPOs, not for the purpose of detecting the stated financial crimes, but to harass NPOs who are grassroots movements to keep the government accountable. The clergyman is also concerned about what he alleged to be discretionary powers granted to the FIC for the registration of the NPOs.